Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo, Jason stood in the dimly lit hallway of Sir Wilfrid Pelly's country home, a worried frown on his face. He'd just received a telephone call from his boss. He says, we have to finish the job tonight, Loris. But that may not be possible. I tried to explain that, but something has happened at the head of the establishment. Something not to our advantage. Time is running out. We have two, maybe three hours at the most. It's not enough. Well, the boss is coming down here personally. The boss? Here? At midnight. He expects us to have broken the old boy by then. Right. Then we'd better get started. Get Sir Wilfred down to the cellar, Jason, at once. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Episode 7 of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel take equal credit in winding up the case of who shot poor George Oblique Stroke XR40. Loris and Jason had been so intent upon discussing the recent telephone call that they didn't notice a shadowy figure at the top of the stairs. Mrs. Peel didn't have to lean far out across the banister to overhear the conversation. It was clear that things were moving towards a climax, and Mrs. Peel rather wanted to be in on that climax. She was particularly interested in finding out just who the boss was. Hmm. So Sir Wilfred is to be taken down to the cellar, is he? Well, nothing for it. Little Prunella will have to go and have a look first. So, Emma Peel made her way quietly down the stairs to where a door led to the cellar staircase. It was dark. But Mrs. Peel had done this sort of thing before. From her pocket, she produced a small torch. The spiral staircase led down to a corridor. Passing along it, she noticed a heavy iron door with a small grid. She stopped. What the... Who's that? Let me out. Let me Shh. out. Quiet. I'm a friend. Don't bother to explain. You're the real butler, aren't you? That's right. I am, Miss Upton. I must say that in all my years of service... How many of them are there? The people who locked you in here? Just the man, Jason, and the woman, Loris. Uh, the young and out, Keller. Uh, there's the man they talked to on the telephone. Uh, they call him the boss. They bring Sir Wilfred down here? In the other cellar, the further along over there. Behind the wine rack. Fine. Look, I can't let you out at the moment, but I'll find a way. Thank you, miss. Good luck, miss. <laughs> A short while later, Mrs. Peel witnessed the pathetic sight of old Sir Wilfrid being forced into the other cellar and strapped to the oak chair. Now, Sir Wilfrid, uh, we have reason to believe that you've been holding back a great deal of information. No, no, I, I assure... In order to make sure that we get it all tonight, I'm going to double the dose of this truth drug injection. Uh, uh, careful, oh. you'll, you'll kill him. Perhaps, but not before I get what I came here to get. Now, the syringe. Look, look, I, I think you should be careful, Loris. Oh. You have no need to stay here and watch if it makes you squeamish. Get along back upstairs, Jason. Someone must keep an eye on that girl. Are you sure, Loris? Of course, I'm sure. Hurry now. Set the tape recorder running and then clear out. Well, all right, if you say so. Right. Now, Sir Wilfred, the injection... And then you talk. John Steed had dropped into the Heron establishment. 
He knew that sooner or later Mrs. Peel would communicate and it might be necessary to obtain help from one of the staff. He found Dr. Ardmore, as usual, tinkering around with the insides of poor George. Oh, I've tried everything, you know, Steed. Absolutely everything. No improvement. Oh, yes, yes. A vast recovery of most organs. He's even talking, but delirious still. Mind wandering, you know. He's being fed. Intra-index only. You wouldn't care to take a chance and feed him the tape Mrs. Peel brought in? It's a risk. If it's too much for him, it could lead to a complete mental breakdown. On the other hand, it might be a shot in the arm, if you know what I mean. True, true. The heart beep is steady enough. Oh, Mr. Steed, there's a telephone call for you. Oh, all right, thank you. Oh, take it in my office, if you like, Steed. Straight through that door, it'll come through automatically. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you very much. Hello, John Steed. Mrs. Peel, ah, oh, good. No, it isn't good, it's bad. They're getting information from Sir Wilfred. Their boss arrives tonight. I think... Uh, uh... Mrs. Peel? Mrs. Peel, what is it? What's wrong? Mrs. Peel? Mrs. Peel? Oh. Mr. Steed, Mr. Steed, it worked. I fed George XR and he came back within seconds. George XR is well. I fed him the tip. Sir Wilfred programmed the message and code into him. It's a fantastic situation. Sir Wilfred, uh, he's... He's uh, being held prisoner in his own home. Good hmm? gracious, how did you know? When it took George at least four minutes to work out. Extraordinary. <laughs> Mrs. Peel lay on the hall carpet. She was out cold. Over her stood a man who'd entered the house during her attempted telephone conversation. It was the man known as Boss. Good job I arrived early, Jason. Also known as Tobin, Ardmore's assistant. Yes, Boss. Your work is satisfactorily concluded, I take it? Lodis is completing the recordings right now, Boss. Go on. Um, this young lady, she is... Mrs. Peel, she knows too much, far too much... Now, if she were a computer, we might erase the memory circuit. Unfortunately, people are more difficult than computers. We have to kill people. Don't we, Jason? So, Jason has set about a disposal job on Mrs. Peel. That's right, Loris. Accidental death, of course. Of course. It's a dry night, after all. That summer house, wooden, dry as tinder inside... If someone were to be in there, somewhere, someone with a box of matches, a, a careless person... I think I understand. It wasn't a job that the squeamish Jason relished, but it had to be done. With Mrs. Peel slung over one shoulder and a large petrol can in one hand, Jason headed for the summer house. He didn't see Steed's car slide silently to a stop in the nearby driveway. Ah. Uh. Heavy. Now, petrol. Now, matches. Match this. Steed hit the matches out of Jason's hand with a swift stroke of his umbrella. Then, stooping swiftly, he seized the petrol can and emptied its contents over him. You, you... Ah, 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 ah. Steed stretched out a lighted cigarette lighter. No, 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 no. Keep away, keep away. Well, do as you're told, then, like a good little butler. Hands behind you. That's it. Now, stretch your chin out. With more, more. That's about it. Now. <sighs> Mrs. Peel, mm. Mrs. Peel, you can come round now. Oh, oh, my prince on his fiery steed. Oh, no, no, asbestos steed. They call me strictly uninflammable. Mmm, smell of petrol. Oh, steel are going to... Joan of Arc and all that. Mm. How many are here? Oh, well, Loris and the man who hit me. The boss, I suppose. And, of course, him on the ground. Right, give me a hand to get him back inside. Oh, there's the other man, uh, Keller. Um, delete him, it's been one of those days. Uh. Mm. Is 
that the law? Yes, boss. Then let's move. What about Sir Wilfred and the butler downstairs? The fire in the summer house could spread. The fire is so cleansing, don't you think? Come along, Morris. Jason, Jason, take this recorder and the cases to the car. Well, come along, man. What's holding you up? I am, actually. Steed. That's right, boss. Tobin. Hold everything. I've got a gun. You expect to stop us? With strategy, yes. I'm expecting a surprise reinforcement from the rear. <laughs> Mrs. Peel arrived, sliding down the banister rail, full into battle. <laughs> Well, that's the way to win wars. Now, let's attend to the wounded and the prisoners. Much later, next day, John Steed, in his apartment, was busy at the cocktail bar. Hmm. Half a jigger. Steed, what are you doing? On the verge of a major breakthrough. Now, a thimble full of scotch. Almost there. Almost where? George Oblique Stroke XR40. Uh, they let me put a problem to him. I asked for the recipe for the most deliciously potent cocktail in the world. And he gave you the answer? He cupped it up in four seconds flat. Just think it would take 500 bartenders four years... Licensing hours permitting. Uh, ...to accomplish what George did in four seconds. Now, one last ingredient. The olive. Get down. Mm. Get the champagne out, Mrs. Peel. We'll stick to the devil we know. And George's recipe? File it under top secret restricted. Friday to John Steed and Emma Field, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omo. <laughs>